All right. Scott, here we go, bud. So that was sweet out on the course to see you hit those pitches pretty solidly. They were all about fours overall. And those putts, it was nice. You tapped one in for the par, and then you three-putted the one from about six feet. And then the other three from out beyond that, you two-putted nicely on, onto the crest of that hill. And again, starting out today, the swing looks so good in so many ways, bud. The, especially over here, you see that uh, the, the face is totally normal, totally right where you want it in terms of the openness and the closeness that you've been back and forth on that continuum with this winter, from last fall even. Um, and then here with the five wood, same good stuff. And again, on plane beautifully. And then even at full speed, you can see how the shaft is parallel with the plane line all throughout in a beautiful way. Um, and then the grip, again, is just perfect. You asked me about it because you've been twisting it around here for the last couple of weeks, you said. So that looks great. Right here it looks great. You know, as you were taking your grip, your dad asked to kind of see it as you were taking it. So that looks great. And then again, when you're taking the grip, that looks cool. And you ended up there, too, when you had the grip. The first one I took a picture of when you, after you waggled and set it down. It looks pretty similar to where the grip was over here. So I like that a lot, buddy. And then the only little, and then from face on again, what we know is, yeah, there's more leg action and head action moving around there than what we'd see with those tour players I've shown you. But the thing I wanted to see here was how good those hands and arms look. They look fantastic through there, buddy. But then when you do this feet on the ground drill, it really does get our lower body and therefore our upper body to be more stable. And then... When you did it with this, again, you hit them pretty well. Again, I, I still like the fact that they're all hooking. Then when I altered something like this, it didn't start slicing it or something. So that's the only other thing I give you. Try to do some with this drill, like always in batches, with the various clubs. But then also do some of that left-right drill, like we did there. You know, about maybe three or four reps of that one. And then, okay, let me try and hit five straight ones. Quite often, when you try to hit the five straight ones, it might slice more. Or you're going to find out, and you're the important one when you're out practicing on your own. Man, I try to hit straight slices. That means I guess I'm opening it too much. Sometimes I'm going to try and hit it to the uh, – yeah, some people, and this may be you in the next couple of weeks, when you try to hit it left, it goes dead straight. I mean, you try and hit it – yeah, left, it goes dead straight. You're like, oh, I guess I need to feel like I'm hitting it left. But you're just doing it with the timing of your release. Your downswing plane is beautiful. I mean – and your alignment, don't do it with your alignment or your downswing plane, just with the face to impact. Okay? All right, bud. Any question about those things? Yeah. The timing of it, of the release. Right. Contact. Absolutely. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah, not, not right now. This is Joel Suggs. I sure enjoyed meeting you down at the Cincinnati Golf Show this weekend and showing you your swing on the 2D equipment that I have. And so I want to take about two or three minutes to just show you around meddling. This is the studio I use in the winter for all my students. You see there's a down-the-line camera angle for our 2D equipment. And then we have a face-on camera angle also. And then what we also have here is 3D equipment to where I can show you your swing from six different camera angles with this 3D equipment and we can get your swing from down to the 1 20th of a, 1 120th of a second in terms of exactly what your hips, shoulders and hands are doing in the swing. And then also, we, I have the most realistic hitting curve I've ever seen from cutterzedge.com so when you hit your full shot it feels as realistic as possible. And then I have three different green speeds for you to practice your putting. 
9.5 on the step meter, 10.5 on the step meter, and 12.5 on the step meter. That's benefited my students tremendously. And then also I have a lot of learning aids like this smart stick. You can see the rest of those learning aids over here in my bag that we can work on to help you learn a certain field in the golf swing that you and I both want. And then also I help my students a lot with their equipment through the winter. This is a frequency analyzer where we twang your club and it gives us a reading here. And then also we plot your whole set, each club on this, these lines to see if the set is really matched or not. Quite often they aren't and it helps my students tremendously when they find out what clubs are the offending clubs. Then if we get tired of being indoors and we want to go outdoors and get some, we can do that. It's my daughter. Ellie, good to see you. I haven't seen her in weeks. <laughs> no wonder you've been gone, Ellie. You've been out here playing in the snow all this time. But this is our natural turf area. This is closed until April, as you can see. Uh, but it's a fantastic area where we can step outside and hit some balls and get some real ball flight. Or... If we get pretty satisfied, the things are looking better on the video here, we're kind of cooped up inside and want to go outside, we can step on out and hit balls and see real ball flights for about 5 or 10 or 15 minutes, however long you and I can stand the cold, out into the air and we see them land at these different flags. I have a yardage book for this driving range. It's the first one I've ever seen in my life where we know exactly what it is for the front, back, and middle of each screen. And again, the covered area here is heated, so we stay out there for about 5, 10, 15 minutes, like I said. It enables us to see some ball flight, and then we get satisfied that things are looking the way we want, and we can come back inside, take off our coat, and look again at the video equipment to see how your swing's looking, to make sure that you understand it. And then notice, too, my exercise ball up top here. And then also, so I help my students a lot with their fitness through the winter, and then I will help you also with your sports psychology, with your golf psychology from the golfpsych.com people down in Texas. That's helped my students tremendously a lot over the years too. So again, I sure enjoyed meeting you down at the Cincinnati Golf Show this weekend. I look forward to seeing you again out here this summer at Meadowlinks, or even right now in the winter. I have a lot of people that work on their games with me right through the winter. Check out more information about the things I do to help you at joelsud.com. Take care.